What's up you guys? Welcome back. This is why I don't live in Korea anymore. Unfortunately. If you like what you see in the video, don't forget to subscribe and become part of the family. Click the notification button so we can see each other more frequently and often. If you want to support me for one of these donations, or because it helps me make more quality content for you and to post more often. Number one, this reason is maybe not so convincing for Koreans, but if you have grown up in a European country, you will totally understand. See, we can't live without cheese. We can't live without bread. There are so many varieties of cheese and bread that it's insane. And when I try to explain this to my Korean friends, they just assume that there is one specific cheese and one specific bread. No, there are so many varieties and it's paradise <laughs> here in that way. And they can't understand why I'm so addicted to cheese. And actually, scientists have looked this up. And it turns out that cheese is made out of milk. When it is a mix concentrate between protein and casein. The casein is transformed into quesomorphin, which is a chemical cousin to morphine or opium. And this quesomorphin is traveling up into your brain and it gives you signals of happiness and a feeling high and you have to eat more. It's, it makes you addicted. <laughs> so that's why we Europeans love cheese. <laughs> Two, housing in Korea is pretty, it's not as good as it is here in Europe. And what I mean is just that the standard of housing here is better and has higher quality than in Korea. Our gushy one standard of living is so much higher and because your gushi one can be down to five square meters small and our gushi one is at least around 17 to 20 square meters number three the work culture again <laughs> the work and life balance i talked about this before to us Swedes, it's so important with work and life balance. And if you get a kid, you will have better conditions when it comes to work and life balance in that way. And more maternity leaves days and we, we get 480 days to stay home with our kid and take care of the kid. And if we do overtime work, we get compensated hourly or with vacation days or time. There's no unwritten law that you have to stay at work until your boss goes home. And we also have unions, which helps us if there's a problem at work or if there's a bad culture at work or if anyone treats you bad or if there's like a bully situation. Number four, the summer in Korea is insane. It's horrible. It's too extreme. It's extremely humid, extremely hot, and it rains. And when I first came to Korea in 2015, in August, late August, it was so shocking when I came out of the airport. It was like a wall I stepped into when I came outside because it was so hard to breathe. The air was like a rainforest. And my dad, who has asthma, who even sometimes has trouble to breathe here in Sweden, he wouldn't have... I mean, he would have such a hard time in Korea because of that. And this goes hand in hand with number five on the list, which is the air pollution. It's extremely bad in Korea. The rain in the summer is yellow. I've heard at least, I haven't experienced this, but I've heard the yellow dust season during summer makes the rain yellow. And the air pollution right now in Korea, I heard from my friends, is even worse than before. And I 
get sick more easily in Korea. And I think that has to do with so there's something in the airport. And of course, study culture and how the kids have such a hard time. And the, there's like so high pressure in Korea when it comes to studying and you, which university you're gonna go to and just the pressure in Korea is not very good for anyone. And last on the list is, is that in Sweden we have something we call pick candy. You go into a grocery store and we have piles of different varieties of candies which you put in a bag and you just pick whatever options and then you weigh it and then you pay by the weight. It's amazing and I miss it so much when I'm in Korea. And we also call this Saturday candy for the kids because they are only allowed to eat these on Saturdays. That was it you guys, seven reasons why I don't live in Korea anymore. And of course also that the gyms are too expensive in Korea. But trust me, I miss Korea every single day. And everything else is better in Korea. I'll see you in the next video.